to Holy Trinity Church at home. It is wonderful to welcome you if you're from Holy Trinity Church family, from uh, Penn Street and Home Green Church family, uh, our family and friends uh, for all of us uh, welcome you and, and a particular welcome this morning if you're visiting with us. Uh, maybe you've uh, just seen it come up on Facebook and thought, oh, what's, what's going on here? So welcome to you all. Funnily enough, our theme today, as you might have uh, noticed from the screen before, is welcome. Uh, Linda, our licensed lay minister, will be reflecting on the depth of that word welcome uh, and what it means, what that word welcome ha has for our lives, particularly in these difficult times uh, when it's maybe more difficult to welcome others, but all the more important. There are resources for our children. There's a, an activity that Jana has uh, put up, um, so please do uh, use that. It's an all-age service today, uh, so if you're at home with children, may I encourage you uh, to get them to join in uh, with parts of the service as, as is good for them. Just a reminder to say that um, St Andrew's Family Support Group is our charity this month. Thank you so much to all the people who have already uh, supported this really worthwhile charity that works with uh, families that are struggling in High Wycombe, so it's a local charity. Um, you can still give, you can either give 
uh, online. Jana, if I could ask you to pop the details in the comments box, that would be great. Sorry, I meant to WhatsApp you earlier on. Um, and also to say, actually, if you would rather give a cash donation, you can pop it through the vicarage door or through Audrey, our treasurer's door, and we can get that uh, to them. And the other thing I wanted to say, you may have seen on our Facebook page or, or elsewhere, uh, that um, Sear Green is being congratulated. Um, the lovely Janet has set up uh, one can boxes outside, uh, best one, and the amazing thing, 60 bags of donations are going in every week um, from this community, which is just absolutely incredible. So thank you everybody for your generosity uh, for many, many people who are struggling and needing to access food banks at this time. So finally, I thought we would light uh, a candle. I'm going to get Caitlin to do that for me. Um, we're going to light this candle. Come on, Caitlin, well done. We're going to light this candle as a symbol of welcome for all from our God. So welcome to friend and stranger. Welcome to the joyful and desperate. Welcome to the near to us and far away. God is with us. How are you getting on all right, my darling? Put it on sideways. Just hold it sideways. It can be. She's all right. She was doing it before. I think you've lit it too many times and blown it out this morning too many times. <laughs> Do you want me to have a go? If you hold the whole pot sideways, then you can. It's all right. I think we're getting there. Have we got there? Right. Well done. You, I think you you lit it and un ah. Oh, we've now got a slight problem. Right. Daddy, can I ask you to sort that out and then we can put it in in a minute? Marvellous! Oh, things, things going slightly awry. So, the welcome at the beginning of our service. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We say together, God our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold fast to your promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Wonderful. So we're now going to have our first song, which is a contemporary song uh, called Waymaker. Wonderful. We've managed to light the candle. Yes, I did. Yay. Thank you, Mia. <coughs>
promise give a light in the darkness my god that is who you are maker, miracle worker promise keep a light in the darkness my god that is who you are ourselves and our concerns to God in a moment of quiet. We say together, for the people I have hurt, I'm sorry. For the mistakes I have made, I'm sorry. For the things I didn't do, I'm sorry. For hurting myself, I'm sorry. God of love and mercy, forgive me. Help me to let go of my hurt and regret. May the God of love heal you of your hurt, restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we have our reading read to us today by Anne Wiley standing in front of a, a gorgeous uh, place in her garden. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever even gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, Truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. So we now have our reflection today from Linda. Good morning and welcome to our living room. Roger welcomes you from behind the camera. During lockdown, our readers have used whichever version of the Bible they have at home, and it has been helpful to hear the slight variations between the different translations. These can often be helpful, as the different nuances can help our understanding of the passage. This morning, I was delighted to find that Anne would be using the Revised Standard Version or the new Revised Standard Version, I should say, as it uses the word welcome, where our pew Bibles use the word receive. Welcome means so much more than receive. I can receive something passively, without feeling or effort, but to welcome something or someone demands positive action and feeling on my part. As we approach a big easing of lockdown on 4th July, we are all looking forward to welcoming friends and families back into our homes and to be welcomed back into pubs, restaurants, cinemas and hotels. We will be able to travel again and to greet the strangers we meet on the way with a welcoming smile. And most importantly, as a Christian community, we look forward to welcoming each other back into our church building, though the timing and details have to be worked out, as there isn't space to squeeze our normal congregation 
let alone all the lovely people we've welcomed onto our online service during lockdown into our small but beautiful church building. And especially as we have to keep a suitable distance apart from each other. When we are planning to welcome people, we make a special effort. We do the cleaning, buy and prepare some nice food, and make sure we have something to nice to drink with it. We prepare the places where our guests will go and make sure they will be as comfortable as possible, even if we do have to keep apart still and won't be able to give each other a welcoming hug or kiss, just an extra large smile. These are things we all do, whether we are practicing Christians or non-believers. This morning's passage talks particularly about an extra dimension of welcome. If you like, Christian welcome. Jesus says that if we welcome him, we welcome God, his Father, and whoever welcomes a prophet, maybe another Christian, receives a prophet's reward. But what is the reward? It is actually defined earlier in the passage, in verse 32, where Jesus says, Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. So effectively, welcome is a two-way exchange. God welcomes us into his kingdom through Jesus, and we welcome God when we welcome Jesus into our lives. Jesus then goes on in our passage to say that whoever gives a cup of water in the name of a disciple will not lose their reward. A cup of water may seem a small thing, though in the sweltering heat we've had this week, it's been probably the most welcome thing we could have been given, even if it doesn't cost the donut more than the effort of turning on the tap. Nevertheless, in the smallest welcome we give to others, we are also welcoming Jesus and Almighty God. What a thought! Although the passage is particularly talking about sharing with other Christians, I believe it is to be interpreted more widely. Christ's command at the end of this gospel was to go to all people and welcome them into the kingdom, his kingdom. It is by giving all people we come in contact with, whether Christians or not, a welcome that we are to help them welcome Jesus and God into their hearts. During lockdown, I know that many of us spent more time in studying the Bible, both individually and in this group, and spent a lot more time in prayer. In doing this, we have given Jesus and God a closer welcome into our hearts. But now we have a real challenge. As we start to spend more time with others as lockdown eases, there is a danger. Yes, the dreaded virus is still out there, and we have to be careful, or alert, as the Prime Minister says. But there is another hidden and more serious danger that we may, in our excitement of welcoming others back into our lives and our newfound freedom, forget to keep welcoming Jesus and God into our lives. We still need to make sure a much more conscious effort to welcome Jesus and God into every new situation we go into. Brother Lawrence, in his book, The Practice of the Presence of God, talks about keeping the presence of Jesus with him in all the tasks of the day. I have to admit that I've never come anywhere near this level of holiness, but it is one to strive for. As we prepare to welcome others post lockdown, we need to keep welcoming Jesus and God along with our guests, perhaps set an imaginary place for them in our minds, pray as we prepare, 
Think of a way God has blessed us during lockdown. We might want to share the conversation with our guests. Everything and anything that keeps us focused on welcoming Jesus and God into every encounter of our lives. And of course, as you are sick of hearing me say, and Casa, it is imperative that we all take time each day to spend specifically with God and Jesus through Bible reading and prayer. So let's focus this week on practicing welcoming Jesus and God into every moment of our lives so that we are ready to carry on doing so when we are let loose on the 4th of July. Our final hymn this morning is All for Jesus. If we do all our actions, chores and welcoming for Jesus, we won't go far wrong. May God and Jesus welcome us as we welcome them and others in this coming next phase of the strangest year we have ever encountered. Amen. Amen. Battery, 90%. Connected to Hill's MacBook Pro. So we're actually going to have all for Jesus now rather than at the end of our service. Let's sing together. <clears throat> Wonderful. Let's uh, 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 share together and profess our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts by faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together. Jana is leading our prayers today. Today we use the theme of welcome for our time of prayer. God of love, we thank you for our village schools and preschools in Sea Green and Jordans who have welcomed more children back to school following lockdown. We pray today for their head teachers, staff and governors, 
as they continue to work under difficult and unusual circumstances. Grant them wisdom and clarity in their decision making, especially as they look to plans for welcoming all the children in school at the same time from September. We pray for our children who have missed seeing and interacting with their friends. Thank you that they can now start enjoying playing together again. Please watch over all the children and teenagers in our villages and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for our village shops of Best One, the Butchers and Jordan's Village Store, who have continued to welcome us and provide for us during lockdown. May we never again take for granted the ability to go to the shops and buy food from stocked shelves. Thank you that we have food in our cupboards to eat and enjoy. From farmer to supermarket worker and all in between, thank you for all those who have worked to maintain food supplies in our shops during this time. We pray for our pubs as they prepare for welcoming villagers back to dine and drink with them. Help them to make the necessary alterations so that when reopening, it can be a safe and enjoyable experience for all. We pray too for our other village shops and businesses who provide services to us. After time close, help them to build their businesses back up and help us to support locally where we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We thank you for our village churches. Thank you that despite being unable to gather together in our buildings, we are still able to welcome both friends, neighbours and strangers to join together to praise and worship you. Help us to continue to creatively think about what the next steps are in online church and the physically gathered congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As lockdown restrictions ease and we look forward to seeing and welcoming our friends and families back into our lives more, give us opportunities to show your welcome to them. While still being at a distance, show us ways in which we can share your love with those we come into contact with. We remember those who feel isolated, sad, lonely or who are facing uncertainty. Help us to show care and compassion towards them. Give us an ability to understand situations and viewpoints that may be different to our own. We think of those who are ill and those who are grieving at this time. We spend a moment in silent prayer bringing those we know to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Thank you that each of us are unique and special and that you welcome us all to be part of your family. At this time, we pray for all those who might feel marginalised or unfairly treated, for those who are discriminated against or who are persecuted. Jesus, help us to welcome and show kindness to all who we come upon, regardless of class, race, gender, religion or any other name label. Thank you that we are all special to you and made in your image. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. To our God who unifies us, grant to us all the will to come together, the patience to live and work amidst our differences, and the joy of the Lord to sustain our strength. Teach us to celebrate our diversity, so that all people may be welcomed in without fear and encounter the immeasurable love of Christ. Fix our eyes on you who unite, and encourage us to draw from you, to offer our lives to each other as we share in the riches of your kingdom. For we ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Merciful Father, I accept, accept these, these prayers for the sake, sake of your, your Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we come to our peace. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. Peace, peace be with, with you. Fantastic. So we come to our offertory. Uh, and as we do week by week, we at this point in the service, we offer to God all, the, all that we have. The, our time, uh, our financial resources, our skills. Uh, and as we thought about that theme of welcome uh, this week, how can we uh, welcome others, the people that we meet? How can we be welcoming through gifts that we might give to One Can or to St Andrew's Family Support? 
How can we support the welcome of God through uh, our church family? Uh, let's just take a moment to think about that together. as we thought what we might do this week, let's offer it to God. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. And we say together, all, all things, things come, come from, from you, and of your own, own do we give you. So, Caitlin, may I help get you to come and help me come and hold this? Thank you very much. And we get the table set up. As I put things out, I wonder whether anybody knows what this is called. A chalice. Well done, Caitlin. So the cup is called a chalice. Does anybody know what this is called? Dish. It's, it's not a dish. That would be good. Start. Good to try. It's not a sauce. It looks a bit like a saucer. It's a plate. It's called a pattern. So it reminds us. And um, we see that it's made of silver, which looks very posh, doesn't it? Why do you think it's made of silver? Silver. So it can hold water in it? Possibly, yeah, so that it can hold the water, hold the wine. Why do you think? Why is it not made of wood or um, just a bit like our glasses or something like that? What do you think? The chalice is made of silver. Yeah, that would be a good idea. It's actually because it's very special. When we have this meal, we remind ourselves that it's a very special meal. It doesn't have to be silver. It could just be a plate and a glass because God can work through anything and everything. But we have it uh, like this because we set it apart and make it special when we remember Jesus in the bread and the wine. Wonderful. So we're now all ready uh, to uh, share our Thanksgiving prayer together. The Lord is here. His, His spirit, spirit is, is with, with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Why is it right to give thanks and praise? Listen, and we will hear. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You made us all each wonderfully different to join with the angels and sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Why do we share this bread and wine? Listen, and we shall hear. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he thanked you, gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. How do we follow Jesus? Listen, and we shall hear. Pour your spirit on us, that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. For honour and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. So we join together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So, opening our hearts to receive God by his Spirit, we take a little time of quiet. Let's pray this short prayer together. Jesus, I love, I love you with my whole heart. Be with me all the time, just as you promised. Amen. The bread of life. Amen. The cup of salvation. Amen. So I'm just washing up and clearing everything away at this point because the bread and the wine has been what's called consecrated, which means it's been set apart for a special purpose. And because it has, that means we need to finish it all up so there isn't any left over. A bit like doing the washing up after a special meal. So we come to our thank you prayer. God of love, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other. Through Jesus. Amen. So, uh, notices this week. Uh, lots of uh, events and activities happening. Do join us on Facebook Live for our services or via Zoom. We've got coffee after the service today. Please do come and join us if you can. If you're looking for the Zoom link, it is on the pew sheet. Uh, if you're not getting the pew sheet, the information sheet, and you'd like to, uh, please let me know and we can get that sorted out for you. Um, our study group on a Thursday morning via Zoom is looking at Tom Wright's God and the pandemic. We did the uh, first chapter la last week and I can commend it to you. It's very, very interesting reading. So even if you don't want to join the study group, do have a look at that book if you would like to. You will maybe have, uh, well, you would have heard that churches can reopen from uh, the 4th of July. I sent out uh, an email to the whole church family this week um, just to say that we will be working on this. We're still waiting for guidance from the government, um, unfortunately. The government does tend to like to make an announcement and then produce the guidance afterwards, which I'm afraid is not terribly helpful. Uh, but anyway, once we get the government guidance, we'll then get uh, technical guidance from the Church of England and our church wardens, Jane and Janine, and our PCC will be going through that and working out um, what that looks like for us in our context. It's really important though to say to everybody that our services, uh, physical services in church won't look like they did. Um, the physical distancing means a much less a number of people are able to be in church. If we have two meters distance, it's, it's only 14 people. Um, we won't be able to sing. Um, and if we're able to have communion, which we don't know whether we will yet, it would only be in one kind. And there's all sorts of uh, things that have to be done in order to, to make that as safe as it can be. So um, we're sort of still working through this time together, um, but alongside 
physical services that we um, that we have, we will be continuing with our Facebook Live services um, to, to ensure that we still have our life uh, as a church together, even though it's slightly in a virtual space, uh, but it means that we can all uh, still be together, we can have music, we can have singing, um, and that will run alongside uh, what whatever we do uh, there. So thank you so much uh, for uh, us all working together and bearing with each other uh, during these strange times. Thank you for your support and the uh, wonderful emails of encouragement that uh, Jay Janine and I have received. Um, they are much, much appreciated. Wonderful. So, uh, to end uh, today, um, there's so many of these gorgeous things that are, are being shared uh, online at the moment. And we had a couple of weeks ago, we had the UK blessing. Uh, well, I thought it'd be lovely. We've got uh, today the Irish blessing, which is 300 churches and uh, denominations in Ireland joining together uh, to sing a most wonderful hymn. Uh, so do please enjoy this.
Fantastic. I think there were more instruments in that one. Um, well, an awful lot of instruments, weren't there? It was wonderful. Let's pray for God's blessing on us. <coughs> may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again to our meeting place. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name Amen. of Christ. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Thank you everybody so much for joining us this morning. It's been lovely to have you with us. I do hope to see some of you at coffee. It would be great to catch up with each other. Otherwise, uh, God bless. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.